most of the time you spend searching for discoveries, you know, you spend doing the groundwork. So it's very rare that you would catch somebody like me in my office and I would tell you I'm making a big discovery. Usually I'm doing something which prepares me for, for, some, for something. And then occasionally you have a breakthrough and then you know something that nobody else knows. Some people get into astrophysics because they're interested in astronomy from early childhood and they have telescopes and they read stuff about uh, the universe and the sky. I came to it from a completely different uh, direction. You know, I was interested in uh, solving problems in theoretical physics and it just so happened that uh, astrophysics, astronomy, uh, impressed me with the problems that they had. I say I grew up in the northeast of Ukraine, but at the same, at that time it was the Soviet Union, it was one big country. My stepfather was probably the person who was the first one to introduce me to physics and to science. My interest in, in the subject was inspired initially by him. 1960s they started launching uh, satellites which were sensitive to x-rays so suddenly you would see the universe in x-rays and this this new picture of the universe in x-ray suddenly provided with evidence for existence of things like black holes our galaxy the milky way has a supermassive black hole at its center it has exquisite observations of its environment, of stars near it, of gas near it. And so I spent several years of my life thinking about how the presence of this black hole, Sagittarius A star, how it affects things which happen around it, how stars form and die near a supermassive black hole. Together with my collaborator, I realized that the stars near this black hole move in a certain pattern. They move uh, in a single plane. If you look with infrared telescope at the center of the galaxy, you see bright stars. And you see these bright stars are not moving on straight lines. They're moving on elliptical orbits. So clearly, if they're moving on elliptical orbits, there is some mass at the focal point of these orbits which makes them go around, just like you know, planets go around the sun on elliptical orbits. The stars have to go around something on elliptical orbits. If you see stars moving around nothing, uh, then uh, there must be some massive object. And by far the best idea of what this object is, that it's a supermassive black hole. Astrophysics is a huge field. You're basically trying to explain almost everything in the universe, starting from tiny dust particles in the clouds of interstellar gas and try to understand the size of those dust particles and the optical properties right over to the scale of the whole universe. Between, there is a huge amount of uh, interesting stuff, interesting cosmic beasts, if you like. You have clusters of stars, you have galaxies, you have black holes, you have small black holes, you have big black holes. You have neutron stars, which are giant nuclei, if you like, and, uh, which are the densest and the most extreme objects in the universe. For a physicist, it's just an incredibly rich playground. You can think about so many different, uh, different aspects of nature. Uh, if you think about the cosmos, if you don't restrict yourself to think about what happens here on Earth.